This is Tim Grotman, and in this video, I'll show how to set up in-game characters that use a waypoint route. Okay, so we'll start with a new scene. Over in the project view, I'll create a new folder for the demo. We'll create a subfolder for scenes. Okay, and I'll save the scene as the demo scene, the scene. Now we want to use the game object menu, 3D object, terrain. So start with our terrain. We create a new terrain, so in demo to organize that, we'll create a new folder for prefabs. We'll put the terrain in the prefabs. Okay, and then we want to center the terrain on the origin. So that happens to be on the negative 250 for the X and for the Z, negative 250. Now we need an end game character, so we'll go to game object, 3D object, and use a capsule. Let's put it on the origin. Let's change this color. So I'll add a subfolder for materials. Create a new material. All right, and we'll give that a color and click on our capsule, assign the material. All right, so now we can see our character. All right, we'll raise the capsule up to one. We'll rename the capsule as an enemy. In case another enemy sits on the terrain. Here's our in game character in the scene view. And now we need some obstacles. So we'll use game object, 3D object, and create a cube. And move it to the side here. We want a cube that's four units tall. That means we'll have to place it on Y with two. That way it's sitting on top of the terrain. We want to set the obstacle to a different color so we can see it. So let's create a new material. Obstacle material. All right, and we'll set that color to something darker to stand out. Okay, and then click on the cube and assign that obstacle material. And then also when we create obstacles, we probably want to group them together. So I'll create a new object for obstacles. And I'll put that cube into the obstacles. And now we can place some things to be in the way. Control D and just place some things as we duplicate these obstacles. And then we can scale the obstacles to provide things to move around for our AI. So we'll just scale these cubes. They could be wider as well. Okay, we'll move our end game character over here. Now that we have some obstacles to run around, we need to create a navigation mesh. So in the rain menu, we can say create new navigation mesh. Okay, and we want to make this large enough that it covers our level area here. So I'm going to scale it to fit our obstacles. There we go. And this will be enough room to hold the obstacles and then some waypoints that I'll set down. Now when we generate our navigation mesh, you can see that it considers the obstacles as walkable area. So we can set that up to exclude those areas. So if we go into our obstacles, we can create a new tag. So I'll add a tag, we'll add an item to the tag and we'll call it obstacle. Okay, and then with the obstacle selected, I can add that tag for obstacle. And then if you click on your navigation mesh, under unwalkable tags, you can add the new obstacle tag. And now if we clear the navigation mesh and regenerate it, our obstacles will no longer be walkable. And now we need some waypoints to walk around. And now to create the waypoints, so we go to rain, create new waypoint route. All right, we'll make sure this is at the origin. And now we can start laying down waypoints. Okay, and now I'll be able to add a new waypoint. There we go. So we'll just place them around the level. All right, add another waypoint, add another waypoint, add another waypoint, add a waypoint, and add another waypoint. Now we have a route to navigate. And now that you have your waypoints placed, you can review each of your waypoints to make sure they look like they've got the right height. So if you have any waypoints that have been in the air that weren't placed on the ground surface, you can hit select the waypoint and then hit drop to surface. That'll place it right on the ground. You can see here that it was placed in the air, so I can say drop to surface. And now it's an acceptable waypoint. All right, 
Looks good. Another one put on the ground. Another one drop surface. This one we can actually move over, move over here and drop the surface. There we go. Raise it up, drop the surface, and now all our waypoints are on the surface. That looks good. A nice little route to navigate. Now our in-game character is going to need to be able to walk those routes. So click on your in-game character. Click on the rain menu. Say create new AI. That'll add AI to your character. And we'll need a behavior editor to create a new behavior for this in-game character. All right, and this is the rain behavior editor. We'll want to make a new rain behavior. So create new behavior tree. We'll call this waypoint patrol. Okay, so you start out with a sequence. Okay, and we'll need a waypoint wrap. So I can click on this root sequence, create decisions, waypoint patrol. For the waypoint patrol, you can see the inspector over here and it wants the name of a waypoint route. So we place the waypoint route called waypoint route. You wanna copy this name and put it into the waypoint route and we'll put it in quotes. So it knows to use our waypoint route. And when things are on the waypoint route, it needs a variable to put the position in. So we'll call that move target. And then within the waypoint route, if we right click that and say create an action to move to the waypoint route position. And if we look at the move action, it uses a move target. So we'll put that variable name move target. We'll set the move speed to 10 so that it moves pretty quick. For the face target, we want to face towards the move target. And the turn speed, 90 should be fast. Although with a capsule, we wouldn't actually be able to see it turn. Okay, and that looks good. We can close the behavior editor. And now if we click on our in-game character AI, this first icon is the mind. And we can set the behavior tree asset to the waypoint patrol behavior tree that we just created. And if I hit play and look at the scene, we can see our character navigating the down point mesh. With the in-game character selected, we can duplicate multiple in-game characters to run around. So Control-D will duplicate it, and we can place more instances of this AI character. Control-D, place, Control-D, Control-D. All right, and now when I hit play, if we look at the scene, we can see all our characters running around our nav point mesh. All right, so you can see we have characters running around our, our waypoints. All right, one other thing we can do is if we go to the game view, we can put the camera on one of these AI enemies and adjust its height. So now we can see our in-game character running around. And now this level is ready for more advanced AI. So a couple things we might want to do is replace our capsule with an actual character. We'd also want to add a more advanced behavior tree. That way our characters aren't running into each other and walking through each other. All right. Well, this is how you set up a waypoint route. And thanks for watching.